to Tech Tonight for the spring semester of 2019. We're excited to bring to you the latest news and keep you up to date on what's happening in the New River Valley and worldwide. Here in Blacksburg, the Hokies are working on their best or worst dance moves for the 2019 Dance Marathon. The event will take place Saturday, February 23rd from 3 to 8 p.m. at the South End Zone Club. Bad Dancing Saves Lives is the slogan describing how registered teens will be raising funds. The proceeds bringing awareness to the local Children's Miracle Network Hospital in Roanoke. The Dance Marathon executive team will be continuing to take donations through the end of the month. Hokies also recently showed off their dance moves at the Waltz Disney in Blacksburg, of course. Reporter Lexi Clatterbuck has more details for you. Lexi? On Saturday, February 16th, the club's first event of the semester offered a free one-hour waltz lesson and a couple of hours of free dance with Disney music and decorations. I spoke with member Rasila Budo about how he got involved with the club. So I had no friends, and then I went to a study abroad session where I met some friends, and one of those friends was the president of this club. So me and some other friends were like, let's go to this dance, try it out. It was really fun. I started going, and then you know somehow I became the city chair. It's kind of happened. Their goal for the event is to gain new members and get as many people through the door as possible. The club partners with Sapphire Ballroom, so their instructors usually teach dancing at events and lessons. At most, 80 people go to the dances, and about 20 to 35 attend the weekly lessons. A two-day investigation has led to an arrest of eight people in connection with a prostitution ring in Montgomery County. A release from the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office said that they launched an investigation after receiving numerous complaints involving prostitution activities on the internet. The police say that a 16-year-old was among those arrested. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office and its law enforcement partner will continue to be proactive in the fight. However, the fight for the recognition of Indigenous Peoples Day has been very proactive on Virginia Tech's campus. Let's head over to Sarah Schlosser for more information. Boy, have I got some great news for you Hokies. After over a year of fighting, Virginia Tech is the first school in Virginia to establish Indigenous, Indigenous Peoples Day. Sorry, It is going to be recognized on the 2nd October every year, and it's actually on VT's calendar, so keep an eye out for that, Hokies. Now, going to some reactions, uh, VT natives said, Virginia Tech becomes the first university in Virginia to adopt IPD. And Jason N. Chavez has said, over a year of hard work, frustration, and excitement has finally led to our vote tomorrow afternoon. All right, Renata and Camden, what do you guys think? I know I'm excited. Honestly, I'm so excited to be part of such an inclusive campus. I couldn't agree more. This is such a great and huge stepping stone for Virginia Tech in their strides towards being a more diverse and inclusive campus. A shooter opened fire in a manufacturing firm in Aurora, Illinois this past Friday. The gunman, 45-year-old Gary Martin, was a 15-year veteran employee of the Henry Pratt Company. Martin killed five people on Friday and an estimated 30 people were in the building during the 90-minute shooting. The first 911 calls came to the Aurora Police Department just after noon. Five officers were shot at during the first five minutes of their response. Martin was killed after police found him trying to hide while firing at officers. The five victims have since been identified. The shooting came just one day after the one-year anniversary of the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Bradford student Elijah Nichols was recently sentenced after the stabbing of two victims. Reporter Denasia Deneville has the details from Radford University. Thank you, Camden. I'm here at Radford University, where in September of 2017, student Elijah Nichols was arrested for multiple stabbings. Now he is sentenced to serve 10 years. Elijah Nichols pulled out a pocket knife and stabbed two other Radford University students at the Phi Kappa Sigma fraternity house. The details that led to the altercation are still not clear, but both Nichols and the victims agree that the altercation happened after Nichols refused to leave the house. After already serving 15 months, Nichols has been sentenced to a total of 45 years. Nichols' 45-year sentence will be suspended after he serves 10 years with a 10-year probation period. 
I had the chance to speak with Ricardo Grace, who shares his experience visiting the Phi Kappa Sigma fraternity house. It might not be in your face racism to where it's like they're calling me the N-word, but it's like I said, little things, not letting you into parties or telling you that it's over capacity. And sometimes if you're already in the party, they'll tell you to leave. But usually when they do tell you to leave, it's not the white people that are leaving, it's the black people. After hearing of Nichols' 45-year sentence, many Radford University students took to social media to express their feelings. I think it's very different now. Um, we've actually been working together and getting better on coming together as a Radford community, but seeing what people have to say about the situation is showing the black community or the minority community their true colors and how they really feel about us. And I feel like that's going to create a more of a divide. The details of Elijah Nichols sentencing has gone viral on Twitter and Instagram. Reporting from Radford University, I'm Denasia Deneville from Tech Tonight. Thank you, Denasia. West Virginia delegate Eric Porterfield made controversial comments during an interview with WVBA last week. Porterfield came under fire for comparing those in the LGBTQ community to the Ku Klux Klan and using derogatory terms for homosexuals. Porterfield was asked if what he would do if one day one of his two young children told him that they might be gay. His response shocked the internet. He said he would take his daughter for a pedicure and take his son hunting and see if they could swim, alluding to attempting to drown his children. The interviewer, the interviewer proceeded to ask for clarification, however, Porterfield responded with a grin. Porterfield accused these groups of being socialist and has since made claims that those in the LGBTQ community have made attacks towards his, him and his family. Porterfield is now worried about his safety. Ties have been made with local priests and sex offenders throughout the state. On February 13th, the, the Diocese of Richmond published a list of 42 priests across Virginia who have credible allegations. Those allegations include sexual abuse of a minor. At least seven of these have local ties to Roanoke, Salem, Bedford, Martinsville, Lynchburg, and South Boston. This list is said to be used to make the Catholic Church more transparent. The Richmond Diocese and local parishes will not be commenting while leaders take time to pray and reflect on this exposure. President Trump has declared a national emergency to free up funding to build the wall along the southern border. This will send the U.S. into uncertain political and legal battles, while also attempting to fulfill the campaign promise that Mexico would be the one to pay for the wall. Trump's plan is to redirect taxpayer money to other accounts to be used to make the 230-mile-long wall. There have been predictions that, pro that Congress may vote to reject the national emergency or even have President Trump sued. With all the voting and decisions that are coming up, whether it be here on Virginia Tech's campus or on the national level, there are some definitely, definitely some decisions that need to be made here in the near future, but I'm excited to see the results. Me too. I'm so excited to see what happens here on Virginia Tech's campus and honestly in the national news as well. Exactly. Well, I think that's going to do it for us. You guys have a great weekend and we'll see you next time.